Jai Shri Hari. I would like to say some words. We are having today a nice little festival and we would like to dedicate this meeting to Gurudev. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we are so glad that Sukriti and Madhurika, Raseshwari, Vandana and me, that we are together again. We missed her for half a year. Raseshwari, she has been in Vrindavan. So this is the first weekend we are together and we are celebrating this. It is also appearance day of Saduma and this room is result of her vision of her visionary strengths. And this room is also blessed by Sadhu Maharaj. And we are also deeply connected with Krishna Chandra. Yeah. Yeah. Jai Hal, who has been here and we are every Monday morning singing the whole uh, Mangala Arati of your ashram and feeling connected. We know that you always at seven o'clock in the morning sing. And I feel this connection from the hills in Tessin to here. To our ashram. And this is also a special day because we do have Udava here. Thank <laughs> And I appreciate it so much. And, and Gurudev, I hope we are here for your pleasure and uh, fulfilling your wish um, that we do have this nice Sangha and going, diving deep in Radharasa Sudhanidi with the help of Udava today. And if I go up, yeah. I also would like to welcome all these nice devotees for this committee. Yeah. Yeah. Best friend of some of mine. I feel as, as if you were my aunt helping me. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I need your help. <laughs> That's it. Uh, we also, um, yes, we are devotees of, of Nitai from Anuva. They are so beautiful, so beautiful deities. So we feel this power they have. We feel so blessed by them. And uh, there is also. Shakta uh, Mohini, in my spiritual development, you are really important for me because there were two crossroads, and yeah, Mohini stood there and she said to me, You have to go this way. Without your help, I wouldn't have to pay for, for, um, for initiation with the Shamanta. It was you. It's not your And Sakshu, Madhuri, he is 30 years, 40 years ago, also friend of Sakshu, with me all the time. Are you there? Mohan. Also, Mohan does again. We have to be met. Like so much that you are here, and there was a, a new connection to his guru Dev last week, and now you are here in this ashram. So thank you so much, and thank you. we would like to have a beautiful lecture with you. Thank you, Devi. Jai, 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 you felt the mood from Sudevi there. We're sitting here in Vrindavan Matan section, <laughs> Matan filial, and the mood is very good. We're about 20 here, and uh, we were many of us together yesterday, and then I've been here 
enjoying the absolute bliss of these five kinkeries uh, since uh, three days now. Dial. Just wonderful. Just having a wonderful time, relaxing and, and thinking and feeling just more love than I can remember in a long, long time. Um, today, we're going to um, read verse one of Shri Shri Radha Rasa Sudaniti by Prabhupada Saraswati with the commentary, of course, by Ananda Das Babaji. But we're doing something a little bit special because verse one, as you probably remember, isn't uh, directly going into the the Leela, the Gaura Leela. It's it's a Mangala Arjuna, and everybody knows this is the auspicious introduction. But I want to reflect with you as a kind of introduction, and then we'll begin reading. I want to meditate with you on what it means to make uh, a Mangalarajana to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What this can possibly represent for us. Radha Rasa Sudaniti is a poem addressed to Radha. Hmm? This verse is not addressed to Rama. It's addressed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's addressed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but but it's a kind of expression of what uh, uh, of what Parvatananda uh, Saraswati shares with Radha What he's understood as his uh, message, his lesson, what he what he uh, is uh, uh, a teaching. Mahaprabhu is a teacher. Uh, he taught his disciples, who then created a, a huge literature that we continue to study and enjoy. And he gave us the famous eight verses in Shikshastakam, as we know. So he's a teacher. He has a, he has a message. He taught us about, he teaches us about the soul's relationship to God. He teaches us how to cultivate that, cultivate that uh, relationship. He teaches us about prema, the divine love of God, and how to cultivate that. And he teaches us about energy, about shakti, about prema shakti, about how the loving energies, God's loving energies, circulate in the world in very obvious ways but also in very delicate, subtle, and surprising ways. He teaches us to be open, to be surprised by the loving energy of God, which is, of course, represented, embodied by Radharani. So if there's anything we learn from his teaching, it's to keep our hearts open to discover Radharani's loving energy anywhere and everywhere. And then, of course, there are the eight verses of the Shikshastakam, teaching us about Sankirtan, about chanting, about, about and honor, teaching us about being um, without greed, teaching us about surrender, teaching us what devotion is, the pleasure of devotion, the, the bliss of devotion and teaching us about separation, which is further embodied in the, in the Vrajlila, and he's teaching us about faith. So Mahaprabhu was a teacher, wasn't he? A very important one with a revolutionary message. But the second revolution that Mahaprabhu brought might be even more important. It might be more important because it taught us to think about who we are, what a soul is, what the soul's relation to, relationship to God is. His appearance changed what we understand God to be. 
And since we are part and parcel of God, this changes what we understand ourselves to be. So he really widely changed what uh, God can, can be. Krishna can fulfill any desire, has no unfulfilled, unfulfilled desires, as we know. Krishna's desires are always fulfilled. But what these desires are, that tells us a lot about Krishna, about the divine, about divine love. And then again, because we're part of Krishna, it tells us uh, about ourselves. We all remember the reasons for, the three reasons for, for Mahaprabhu's appearance. He wanted to, instead of being in the subject position relative to Radha, he wanted to take the object position. He wanted to be the object of Radha. Radha's emotions, her, her desiring, her longing. The second one was that he wanted to see the world from Radha's point of view. He wanted her mentality. And then maybe most of all, he wanted to feel her bliss, her pleasure. If she wanted, he wanted to know what it feels like to love like she does. Remember that Mahaprabhu is not an avatar, Krishna. He is an appearance of Krishna. He's Krishna. She, he is Krishna in her. So Krishna, we understand this, is, is uh, in this appearance, in the appearance of Mahaprabhu, is male and, and, and female at the same time. Not one experience of love, but, but two experiences of love. And because it's both sides of the experience of love, lover and beloved, it gives the nature of God an active character. God is not an idea of love. God is not a dry and abstract concept of love that we can read about in the book. God is not love. God is loving. God is loving relation. It's an ongoing, constant expression of love, experience of desire, and further expression of love in order to quench, to quell that desire. This is the enormous revolution of Mahaprabhu. The divine model that Mahaprabhu represents, which I can see you better, everybody. The divine model that Mahaprabhu represents is one of living love. Not one idea of a distant kind of love that you experience once you leave your body. It's male and female experience of love, male and male and female mentality together, male and female experience of pleasure together. It's not one but two. So the Mahaprabhu is showing us that to live is to love. Not that we can live and then maybe have some love if we have time. Or the, or the desire. No, if you are alive, it's because you're loving. If you are alive, it's because there's love flowing in you. And this model also tells us that anything we do is loving. Anything we do is loving. Any action is loving. This is how I understand our dear Gurudev's idea of love and action. It's not a matter of doing some action and deciding that love would be a good idea to put in the action. No, that to act, to act in the world is to love. All action is loving. And then finally, the most profound, just to exist is to love. There's no existing entity that is not on one level or another involved in a loving relation. Small and huge, marginal and, and, uh, and, and wide, every relation between any soul is somehow a loving relation. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a relation. 
Gurudev says, do you have a relation to your coffee cup? No. There's a relation where there's love, where there's uh, relations everywhere, so there's love everywhere in the relations. Once again, we wouldn't be existing if we didn't have this love flowing in our in our lives. This is the this is the miracle of Mahaprabhu to show us this. Love is not an option. Love is not a good idea. It's the only idea. It's not a choice. There's no democracy. <laughs> if you're there, it's inevitable. It's a guarantee. And since you your soul is eternal, it's a guarantee you arrive at a full understanding of love. So our task isn't to say, hmm, yes, I think I'll have some of that divine love. Sounds nice. Our task is to realize in our practice that we're already full of it. This is what bhakti means to me in my understanding of Mahaprabhu. So if we don't think that everything in our lives is energized by love, if we're not convinced, then we have some realizations still to do. That's our path to go, to deepen our understanding of the role that love plays in our, in our lives. This is what God is. This is what reality is, because it's what God is. You are divine love. You don't need to ask for it. Don't need to go out and get it. Don't need it to be given to it because you were behaved well. You've already got it. You've already been given. You, you need to realize it. This is mercy. The divine is already yours. Please relax and realize that it's already yours. So this is what, for me, Mahaprabhu brings to us, the miracle, really telling us what we are by showing us what he is. And so every drop of nectar that we, we gather from the Radha Rasa Sutaniti when we read over and over again is, is one, one more little detail, little nuance of an atom of the love that God feels and that we have access to, to feeling too. So every cell in our body, every thought in our minds has this, this potential because it's in reality energized by love, by Radha Shakti, by Prema Shakti, Radha Shakti. So what about this Mangalartana? It's a bit unusual for this reason, I think, and that's why I wanted to talk about it for a few minutes before reading. Among the Hajna, everyone knows, is a prayer for auspiciousness. It's a prayer that the poet, or the writer makes to God, to Guru, to Acharyas, asking that he has favor so that the writing will go well. So it's the first thing you write, you sit down and say, please help me to write this difficult poem. Give me good conditions, auspicious conditions. Help me to attain success. It's always at the beginning of any work, you know. It's a prayer for success. But what would success be? What does success mean for this poem, our, our beloved Radharasa Sutaniti? Success would mean that it opens us up to this secret message of Mahaprabhu. That we feel and see through the reading. We complete no we're good. We feel and, and see through the reading what Mahaprabhu has brought. So in, in other words, it's not to say Swarasvati is not so arrogant as to say. I've got a great message. It's completely original. Let me tell you what the truth is. No. He's saying, if I do well, this poem will fully represent the reality of Mahaprabhu's uh, gift uh, to us. And it's a gift there. 
eternally and will be eternally there. Mangalarti, continuation, requesting mercy for the success of the poem to, to communicate this to us. So he's praying for mercy, that the divine message will come, it'll come through, that the, the, the divinity will flow through his, through his pen. The poem is not his. This is what mercy means. It belongs to God. To Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It belongs to nobody. Divine itself, or it belongs to, oops, reality, if you like. It'll, in a way, it'll always, it'll always be there. So, in, in this way, eternal and omnipresent knowledge, it's for you always, it's for you everywhere. And if things go well, you'll receive it like that fully. What I love about the Raza Sudaniti is that it gives us a picture of what divine love looks like. And if, if the poem is successful, like Saraswati Prabhupada on the prayer, then receives this message. And we'll understand that this is what love looks like. And we'll understand what it looks like. We'll be able to understand. So this, and then I'll finish, tells us something about parampara too. Parampara and mercy. Mangara, Mangala Archana is, let's see what's going on. The internet for Bindanish. Text the Udava. We go to a hotspot. This is a typical spot that we call a connection. Stand by, everybody. We'll make an adjustment. Try to improve. There we are. Is better sound now? I hope. Okay, spotlights. Spotlight. Okay. My own Shakti, is it okay? Good, thank you. Then we'll carry on. I was just about to conclude by saying something about um, uh, parampara and and mangalarjuna and mercy. Oh, not so good to look at. Not so much to see. Add spotlight. No. In a way, Mangalarjuna is seeing spiritually what makes the work possible. Seeing the souls that are in the work. Seeing the, the legacy that's, that's, in the, that's in the work, that's in the pages. So this means, of course, remembering the people, remembering Guru, the Acharyas, and the, the gods and demigods, but not just remembering them, making, but making them, making them be present in our minds when we're reading. It means recognizing what's been given from them. It means recognizing the mercy, the mercy, the mercy of the tradition, the, of the parampara. You know, in the West, when we write a book, we start a book by thanking a person or many persons, the people that helped us, right? Thanks to my mother and my father and my teacher and my boss. Thanks for the money that I got to do it. And what are we thanking? We're thanking 
the eyes and the knees, the minds and the egos that made the work happen. In the West, we thank ego identities that made it possible for our book to get written. Because we think the work comes from our ego. We think that it comes from our minds. And we think it's going to be given back to the other egos and to the other minds. But in bhakti, we use passive language. We are not doers. We're, we're viewers. And so we don't say, thank you. You did this for me. I could not do this without you. We don't talk like that at all. There's no I. There's no you. There's only the flow, the flow of the love. So we say thank you, but we say thank you that this has come to me. Thank you that this has come. Thank you that this has been given. Thank you that this has been done. Thank you that this has been seen. Thank you that this has been experienced. Thank you that this has been felt. We're not doers. That's what Mangalajana says also. We don't receive the loving gifts in the text from other doers. There are no doers. Nobody owns the love. Nobody has a patent on the love. There is no origin of the love. There's no love store to go and buy the love. God is the origin of the love and God is the end of the love. It's one big flowing circle. The flow, God, the love flows from her and returns to her, it flows through us and returns to her. So all the love comes from her and goes back to her through us, through Guru, through Acharya, through devotee, through work, through all activities. So all love is borrowed. And that's why we give thanks. Thanks for the loan. We give thanks that we can let it come and we can let it go. There, that's what I wanted to say about Mangala Rajna. And now we can actually read together the first one. And uh, please, of course, comment freely, just turn on your mic and share as, as you like. Or even if somebody would like to share about what I just said, of course. You know the format, which is particularly lively in the German Zoom. Who's reading? Great, sweetie. The microphone's right here. You're good. I offer my obeisances unto Lord Gorajanta, who is surrounded by all his associates and whose body is studded with goose pimples of ecstasy that mock the beauty of blossoming kadamba flowers. Can we can we hear again, but maybe a little louder, please? Um, yes. Toniti, we could not hear. It was a little too far. Okay, good. Far away from the mic. No, it I offer my obeisances. <laughs> Okay, now Gopika. Uh, now you have an echo maybe somewhere. I don't know. No, that was somewhere else. Okay. Thank you. I offer my obeisances unto Lord Gora Chandra, who is surrounded by all his associates and whose body is studded with goose pimples of ecstasy that mock the beauty 
of blossoming kadamba flowers. <laughs> he raises his arms repeatedly and loudly crying, Hari, Hari, as he dances and sings, showering the surface of earth with cascades of tears. Beautiful, thank you. Once again, the, we don't yet see another one here. They're nowhere in sight. And we don't start to enjoy the, the beauty of their, of their lilas. Like I said before, the very delicate, nuanced descriptions of, of the beauty and of the, of the emotions. But here we get a description of Mahaprabhu and her, his, her beauty and the emotion that he, she feels. And the way that this is experienced, the way it comes out on uh, his body, her body, as she's dancing. And so in a way, we get a first description of what ecstasy is, of what this full feeling of complete pleasure in divine love would look like. So it tells us already something about what bliss is, and it tells us already something about what how God experiences this, this bliss. And that's how we pay our respects in this, in this verse one, this Mangala Arjuna of Radha Rasa Sutanita. Mr. Hmm. Chanda, do, would you comment for us? We're so lucky to have you there. Just, it's very beautiful. Can I hear? Yeah, a little distant. Yeah, yeah, even is also not so good. We're quite a couple, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Too much excess. Too much excess. <laughs> Always. You think it's over there now? He's frozen. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So we are okay. <laughs> <laughs> can everyone else hear us now? Yes. Well, yeah, we can hear you. The, the, the internet is back in the well, unless unless someone else wants to share. Yes. From those present. I think it was a very nice introduction, Buddha, to you to, mm. to feel um, Mahaprabhu's uh, mood, how he is both together, Radha and Mohan, and how they have come to give their love. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we were driving here, two and a half hours, oh. we were singing or <laughs> chanting also this verse in the car. Really? We oh. had some nice uh, pre-meditation on, on this uh, beautiful uh, verse. And you explained it so nicely. What is the meaning to get introduced to get an auspicious invocation means like also you're welcoming not only a guest but we are welcoming you know the the love of Radha Mohan in my life mm -hmm. I'm welcoming Lord Gauda Chandra who is giving this beautiful beautiful uh, feelings 
that I have maybe forgotten or I have lost on the way of my identifying with the temporary existence. But here we get the invitation of Gaura Chandra, the beautiful golden moon, who has come to give us the same love that he is relishing. You know, we were discussing, Manmohan and myself, that Krishna is never a miser. Yeah, always generous. <laughs> when he is relishing the love of Radhika, <laughs> he is at the same time distributing. Why? Because she is so generous. She makes him more generous than he would usually be. <laughs> she fills up the container of our hearts and she is inviting us, come, I have so much love for you. Come and you know, feel the love that Radha and Mohan are and who you invite to share the love, to care in loving relationships and to also how do you say, discover the own potential of this loving being and the loving self that we are, that we have, and that we want to develop. So I thought it was a very in auspicious invocation, <laughs> what you were giving, Mudavanji. And I feel also by giving this feelings of my own heart, of my own open windows to my soul, others can also feel theirs. Because it's not only about the text and the learning, what is the name of Radha Rasa what is Gora Chanda, who is, uh, you know, he, but how to feel them. Because the feelings, that is what we learn so much in Raga Bhakti. We need the feelings to grow our love. Otherwise, maybe we grow the knowledge, we grow some information, but what we come, what we want, what the soul desires, at least my soul, <laughs> but I can guess it would be the same with all of us, is to feel the love, to feel more, and to be more absorbed in the spiritual identity that Lord Gaurachandra came to offer to us. And not only Krishna alone, but together with Srimati Radhika. So we are lucky, and that was our conclusion, right? <laughs> After two and a half hours. List when we arrived here, and immediately Nita and Goranga were there in their big, big, ex, you know, in their big forums and beautiful forums. And I felt so showered to be here again after a long time. So, mm -hmm. so thank you all for making this all possible and um, being here together with you. and Feeling so welcomed and feeling so loved. Tarun Baba, you're an expert on this verse. I read your blog last night. He's a stealer. <laughs> you wrote about this. Yeah. Can you hear us? I think he does because he's shaking his head no. Yes, I can hear. <clears throat> Radhe, Radhe, I can hear. Would you like to share on the... Uh, would you like to share, Tarun? About? About the subject, about the verse. Hmm. This is a very wonderful verse, but my voice is not... My voice is not strong. I try <clears throat> to speak a little oh, bit. Oh, you have a cold. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Not so nice. um, I mean, you really, really touched so many points in the in the introduction. It was wonderful to, to hear, you know, what is a Mangalajanam, what means Parampara, and what is the gift of Mahaprabhu. The gift of Mahaprabhu is that we can attain manjari bhav that is the that is the main the main gift of of mahaprabhu and like suniti said you can talk about 5000 hours but you have to feel what you talk about you have to feel the emotions you have to feel that thing that special you know vibration of of raganuga bhakti and this is only possible when we cling to the lotus feet of gurudev and when we follow when we follow those who have this love in their heart. 
So this special love of Mahaprabhu, we are very fortunate because your Guru Dev and my Guru Dev, they are all in the same parampara. You know, they're all in the same line of Nityananda, who is not different in in that sense from Mahaprabhu. He is also empowered to to spread that wonderful love. So if we try to imbibe that mood and that love into our heart from our Guru Dev, what he has in his heart. We are on the safe way. And this is what you say, this ecstasy can only come when we stay true to that feeling, when we see what is that, when we are one-pointed, when we don't read so many books and so many lectures, we only focus on Ekanta Bhav, on this Radha, Radha Bhav, on this Manjari Bhav. When we stay in this, we don't focus on too many inputs, too many sources, too many voices, only what your Gurudev is saying and what, what our Gurudevas are saying, this Daibhav, this being one-pointed, like Suniti said in the car, why is singing so many songs? We only sing one song, and this song usually prays for the love to be a kinkari. So this is this one-pointed. <laughs> this only comes by Mahaprabhu's mercy through, like you wonderfully said, Udavji, through the parampara. Only that is the only possible way, you know, like you get a letter. When the Udava is sending me a letter, the letter has to get into my hands by the post office, by the ones who deliver the post. So this unbroken delivery system, the Parampara, which brings down this beautiful love, is the most important and the most valuable thing in our modern times that and, and and like in bhagavatam is said when shukadev goswami is tasting the bhagavatam each verse is getting more nectar because he is a parrot and if the parrot eats a mango the mango becomes more sweet so the more it comes down from the parampara into our heart the more sweet this nectar is so this is the beautiful thing about mahaprabhu's gift to our world that is the most powerful thing. Thank you. This is which we always have to remember. Thank you so much, my dear. Really very, very, very nice and helpful. I hope you feel better. When are you traveling, Tarun? I, we had to cancel the flight on, on, on Friday. Oh, I could no. not travel. No. Oh, no. We, wanted, we wanted to fly on Friday night, but I was not able to fly. So let's see when we can go next time. <laughs> I was not able to go on the plane in that in that uh, condition. Not possible. So sorry. No problem. Continue with the lecture. It's not about <laughs> me. It's about the lecture. <laughs> sorry. Anyone else want to share, Jainanda Ji? Yes, Jainanda Ji. So nice to see you. In bliss. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on the would you like to share? See you? Yes, there is. Yeah, open him up. Yeah, they tell that they are there. Okay. <laughs> so nice to see you. I see you. <laughs> So later on, if something happening, I, I would like to see, just to go ahead to. Very good. Maybe we go on reading. Yes, we go on. Go ahead. Auspicious invocation. Am I audible like this? Yep. Comments. <laughs> Sripad Prabodananda Saraswati is the object of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great mercy. So his mind and heart are always absorbed in the sweet pastimes, attributes, and sentiments of Shimati Radharani in Braj, in Vrindavan. So means his, his heart is open. The mercy means not that he gets something concrete, but that it opens his heart so that he can receive. 
the love, the, mes the message, the, the truth. And also another great point here is that he is the object of mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So because he got this mercy, he is always with Srimati Radhika. Ah, that's it. His mind and heart are always absorbed in the sweet pastimes, attributes and sentiments of Srimati Radharani in Raj. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's all we want to be absorbed. <laughs> it's all we want, it's all we need. The rest will be coming. So Baba is going directly to the point. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't even mention Krishna first. He yeah. goes directly to Swan. <laughs> to the, that to is, the treasure. That is so uh, special, special. Now he begins his delicious book of eager prayer named Radha Rasa Sudanidi out of compassion for the devotees who aspire for the confidential service of Shimati Radharani's lotus feet. So that he can give mercy. He asks for mercy that so he can be merciful to the devotees. So again, this was discussed, I think, the previous Sunday is that actually the words of the Mahachans are only there for us as a blessing, you know. Again, Baba is making that point that they have not, they don't have to write anything down. So they only write it down for the benefit of us. And this is so astonishing, you know. They, they, they had this, you know, they, they, had, they have been seers of the future. They know that generations and generations and generations will come and will pick up these words. So out of sheer compassion, they wrote these things down. That is so powerful. But they just, how don't they just make themselves invisible? You know, they don't even exist. The message goes through them. What, what's also amazing is that, um, that they know that uh, there will be a million future generations. How do they know this? That's quite a miracle. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Krishna Sunrise would like to share something. Radhe Radhe Radhe. We are just all sitting here with Sadhu Maharaj. <coughs> and actually, this Kripa Patrata that Prabodhananda Sarasad is writing, that this is a, a certain attitude in a heart to, to really receive. And then it is written down by the Acharyas. This is one of the greatest wonder because they never sit down how we are writing. Srila Rupa Goswami is one, at one point, he's telling how he's writing down. He says, Shukadev Goswami, at one point, he can not even speak the name of Shimati Radhika and whole Bhagavatam. It will be like too much. He would shake too much. In all the Vedas, they were hiding this, this deep truth. But Rupa Goswami, he is deeply, deeply absorbed in the forest of Ter Kadamba, which is complete wilderness. And then in middle of the night, Suddenly, an immense intensity and spurti are coming. And then he knows, now my Goranga wants that it is written down for the benefit of the world. And what is he doing? He is collecting a, a few dried leaves in the forest and he's burning them. And in a little light, of these little burning leaves, he's right. taking some what is rinden? Bark. bark from the trees. And there he starts writing that which has never ever been spoken. That what <laughs> our Goranga is, is given. So this is like a, an immense outpour. And Rupa Goswami says, I even got one very special quality of my Goranga, 
a kripa I'm a kripa patra that no one else ever got. Dharya dharana shakti. I can keep the composure. Even in Ramayan, just when Sita meets Ram for the first time, actually her sakis see Lord Ramachandra down in the forest and they run to go to Ram. And Sita said, oh, something special happened, I can see. And they say, you know, our eyes have seen, but our mouth cannot speak it. It's impossible. So one cannot say it, but it's impossible. But Mahaprabhu gives to the Acharyas like Rupa Goswami and also Prabodhananda Saraswati Dharya Dharana Shakti, the immense Shakti to keep composure. And also Rupa Goswami writes, another mercy has given to me, it's Vachalyata. I'm very talkative. All others keep it hidden and they will never ever talk. But Mahaprabhu makes me and forces me to speak. So it's just again gone. <laughs> no, 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 you're still there, you're still there. Thank you. <laughs> so this is like that's why it's the great the greatest wonder in world history that these kind of things can be spoken and can be written even. Because even a person who is absorbed, who's really seeing, actually just by opening the mouth, all sattvic bath would come in his, in his body and he would be unable to speak anything. So, but that by the Dharya Dharana Shakti, they be able to reveal something. Maharaj, you like to add something? No, please share. Uh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's just miraculous actually, because when you were away, Tarun Baba said something very close to what you just said in a different way, but harmonizing about the gift of the of those who wrote it down. Just so beautiful. Go on. Raja Bihari, Sri Krishna, accepted the mood and complexion of Sri Radha and became Gaura to fulfill three desires. To understand the greatness of Radha's love, the wonderful qualities that she alone relishes in him and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. In Vrindavan Leela, Krishna was the witness of the sweetness of Sri Radha's love, of which he himself was the object. And in Gauda Lila, he accepted the mood and the luster of Sri Radha to understand the gravity of her love. Can we, can we stop there? I, this, this makes me very curious. I don't think I don't have so much <clears throat> pearls of knowledge to share, but the, the, the relationship between, the, between these two meetings of uh, Radha and Krishna, they meet, they meet before in Bhagavatam, in the so-called Vrindavan Lila, they're, they're lovers, she's the favored lover. And that it's because of this relationship, as far as I understand, then when it comes to the appearance of Mahaprabhu, this is the female whose mood Krishna will take, his favored lover from the Raja, the, the Vrindavan Lila. But what has caused this choice? What has caused this evolution? What happened in between, if you like? That's, that's the question I have. How did Krishna change? How did Radha change? 
Why was she chosen to be the one whose mood he would accept? I wonder if one of our acharyas has an answer to this question. Like Jainando, I feel busy. No, no. Right. My feeling and understanding like this. So Krishna does lead with Radha in Brindavan. This is a perfect leader, one sense. But one sense, Krishna could not satisfy fully. Because Krishna could not understand fully Radha Rani's glory, glorification. And also, Krishna could not understand really Radha Rani's position and Radha Rani's love. And uh, also his beauty and attribute. So, and also he want to taste real Radha's uh, happiness, blissful feeling. So in that sense, Brindavan Lila is not completely satisfied for Krishna. Means perfect, but also some missing point there. So, therefore, Mahaprabhu has to, again, I know Krishna has to take <coughs> position of servant. And he has to take the mood of Srimati Radhika and also hue of Radhika. So he want to, in this time, Brindamarira, they are separate, but also interesting, they again, united together. And then he is Krishna, Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but also Radha. Feeling body view is Radhika. They very much interesting. And in that position, Mahaprabhu want to, actually Krishna want to taste and understand Radha than his glory and feeling and his real, uh, which only Radhika could understand, could taste. So this is a very mystery. So in this Gora Lila, Krishna could fulfill all feeling of Radhika. Not only Radhika's feeling, Krishna could taste Manjari's feeling also. This is amazing, actually. No other incarnation could distribute this feeling. I think this is Unna Tujwa Rasa. This is amazing Rasa. No go, no, you know, go, no Gopi Baba, no Saki Baba, no other Baba. This only, uh, Baba <laughs> Maybe Tarun Baba could explain, or, or Krishna Chandra Baba explain more. I think you touched it very much. You touched it very nicely, Maharaj, very beautifully. Um, it's very simple, actually, like you said. Um, one thing is, of course, Krishna wants to experience the highest love, so therefore he has to take the shelter of the lotus feet of Radhika and take her path. This is one thing. He has to taste it himself. He wants to taste it himself. But honestly speaking, what, what came into my heart was that he Mahaprabhu has to take on the mood of Radhika to distribute it. That is the only reason why he took on the behalf of Radhika to distribute Unadujwala Rasa Swabhakti Shriyam. That in this age, he is called the Audarya. He is called the one who is most magnanimous. And this is not Krishna's job. Gurudev always saying, this is not the job of Krishna. This is the job of Swamini. So Mahaprabhu, he assumed the path, <coughs> <coughs> the path of, of Swamini, of course, to taste it himself, 
But since he is Audarya, since he is so magnanimous, he also wants to give to the people, to the Jiva, the Jivas in Kali Yuga, the highest love possible. And that he can only do with the behalf of Swamini. So this is my feeling that this is his, his most important one. You know, he came to establish so many temples and mats and buildings and all these things, but mostly he came to do only one thing, Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu. He only came to spread Raga Luga Bhakti, finish. He, he, of course, ordinarily, there has to be in buildings and temples and mats and all these things, yes. But mainly his movement was a movement of the heart, the movement of spreading Raga Luga Bhakti. That is his main. And this you can only do. You can only spread Raga Luga Bhakti when you have the mood of Swamini, because what is the highest mood in Raganuga Bhakti? Manjari Bhav. Udlanda Chwala Rasa Swabhakti Shriyam. So this you can only do if you have a glimpse of the love of Swamini. So therefore he took the path of Swamini. Okay, Krishna Chana would like to share <laughs> Wonderful. Please. Good not to hear Krishna Chandraji. Uh, no, no. Okay, no, no. Yeah. It got just got muted. Now, now. Radhe, Radhe. Wonderful to hear all my brothers and sisters. There's one very special thing, one name of Sri Krishna that is just in the beginning of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Krishna is Akila Rasamrita Murti. He's the one who is relishing all types of rasa. But in whole Brat, he experiences one type of rasa. It's called Vishayalamban. All the love is like directed to him. And if he wants to be Purna, if he wants to be completely full, he must also experience the other side. So Gaur Lila is just to make Krishna Leela complete, it needs the other side that Krishna can fulfill these kinds of desires. And like you said, you read just before this, about these three desires. When Krishna was, this is described in Prem Sampud, Shimati Radhika is crying and crying in a little forest after Krishna left Rasalila. So Krishna, he took the form of a Devi of Brahma Loka. And he came down and was also crying before the Kunja of Shimati Radhika. Very much. And of course, the servants of Shimati Radhika, they have this compassionate heart. Karunam Kurumai, Karunam Barite. This is the very nature of Shimati Radhika's being. Even once in Varshana, a, a little a calf was born. And just by being born, it um, herded himself a little on the lips, just by a piece of grass. Radhika came immediately running, put so much turmeric and embraced this calf. This is her very nature. So also her servants have exact that mood. They took this little girl they have never ever seen, but she looked very beautiful. It was actually Krishna. They took her in the Kunja towards Radhika, and Radhika embraced her and said, why are you crying? And Krishna, in the form of this little girl, said, you know, I just saw this, I, from the heavenly planets, from Brahma Loka, I could see Ras Lila, and I saw you gave up everything in the night of Raslila. You just run towards him. But what did he do? He just left you again. This Krishna is so extremely cruel. And Radhika embraced this little girl, not even knowing that it is Shamsundar, and said, you have no idea. Now I have to tell you how wonderful he is. And Radhika started to speak about the glories of Krishna. Krishna never heard this personally. Whenever he's directly with Radhika, Priya Yadiman, Kara Yevata, and Radhika gives heavy verse. 
to Shamsunda. She's never speaking beautiful, uh, loving words because love immediately in in his, in the in the direct association it turns into Vamya Bhav. But now Krishna is I even if I act cruelly, she feels it so differently. I cannot understand. I have no idea. So naturally it is growing and growing. And when Krishna disappeared in the Raslila and hiding in the bushes, and Shimati Radhika and the Gopis, they don't know where to go. They did exactly what we do in this world. They hold hands and come at the bank of Yamuna in the full moon night. And out of millions and millions of Gopis, one song is just coming out. Jayati te vikam janmana braja Gopi Geet. And Krishna is hearing and hearing behind the bushes. But at one time, he's so compelled by this love. He cannot, he cannot understand. And he's just jumping out and said, here I am, your servant. But he knows now to fully understand. It, I need like a new dimension where I can leave all my vishayalamban all my mood of being the enjoyer. And this is Gorlila. And even when Goranga came to Vrindavan, he was sitting at Imlital at the bank of Yamuna, completely in the bar of Radhika, completely absorbed in Sri Krishna. Tasting that what Radhika is tasting. But here in Braj, it became very difficult for him because like the old environment was very difficult. And suddenly he fell back into Krishna Lila. So Gorlila must be like a new dimension that very mystically it that but in in Braj Lila could not experience for everyone, not just for Krishna, for all the associates, can be experienced in another realm. So that other realm, which is like a Parishist Lila, Parishist means appendix. It, it the appendix belongs to the book, but it's says something which is not written there. So this is Gaur Lila, and this is the very, very deep connection. And you can see every moment in Gaur Lila has an uh, exact replica in Braj Lila. Like, for example, I will just give one last example. When Mahaprabhu, our Goranga, now completely experiencing the path of Radhika is in Gambira in a very, very little room. And sometimes he can hardly contain himself there and he's hitting his head against the wall. So what is he feeling inside? Now he's Radhika in Yavat. And Shyam Sundar and all the coward boys, they come just back. It's Goduli, the evening time. They come back from the fields, just passing Yavat. And oh, everyone from the village is going up and can see. But Shatila and Kutila, they put Radhika in a very little chamber, close it in. And Krishna knows, oh, my Swami is there. And a little calf runs exactly in front of that little room. And Krishna now has the excuse to run exactly to that place. But Radhika feels he's right there but I still cannot see him. And she is banging her head against the wall. So every, every moment in Braj Lila has the equivalent in Gaur Lila. There's a very intimate connection. So that what is, Sri Krishna is always Ashraya Lamban, but when he wants to experience the other part, Ashraya Lamban Bhav, now suddenly Yoga Maya opens a very new realm, and that realm is called Eternal Namadik Dham. Wow. <laughs> We're all saying wow here in the room. Thank you for that, Krishna Chandra. This was a uh, wow. <laughs> but the, the expect explanation. It was all about Krishna. I have some kind of very naive feeling, really, really naive, I'm sorry for that. That also the Gaura Lila 
is some kind of expression of the fact that divine love cannot be endless unless it's spread to all the jivas. A bit following Tarun's argument there, there's his comment about the whole point of it is to, of Mahaprabhu is to, to spread this uh, uh, Manjari Bhav. And in a way, it's so that all the jivas could have access to Prema. I feel there's something, some kind of a motivation, more of a, uh, more of a compassionate motivation on the part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu than, than just the egoistical one of Krishna. But, Shall we go on? One thing, Raga Nuga, and other thing is Rupa Nuga. So, Raga Nuga and Rupa Nuga, we have to understand what is Rupa Nuga and what is Raga Nuga. Narayan Maharaj is very nicely explained in hidden path of devotion who follow the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he follow Manjari Bhav, Rupanuga. Rupanuga, if you see, the Rupa Goswami was teacher. So he has to give all the way of the bhakti. Sakya bhav, Basaldi bhav, uh, 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 conjugal love, these three loves together. But if you see his disciple, who is Raghunath Das, he is only know the feeling and practice of Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Goswami, real bhav was a sai bhav inside. And in that sai bhav, he was only practicing bhav lasrati. That bhav lasrati is the special gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Unnach uh, Ujjwal Rasa was before also. Nimarga Sampradaya, Haridas Sampradaya, Hit Harivans, all these lines was in Vrindavan, it was practicing. But what is Unnat Ujjal Rasa? What he Unnat? Ujjal Rasa is there. But what he Unnat Ujjal? What is that Unnat Ujjal? That Unnat Ujjal Rasa is Bhav Lasrati. That Bhav Lasrati is Kinkari bhav, dasi bhav. And if you see, taking Krishna mood of Radhika, what is meaning? When we go to Gurudev, what we take? The mood of Gurudev. Mood of Gurudev and cover, not go out of that, of Radha Bhav. 
So keeping that mood, a covering from external world is the is the practice. Mahaprabhu gift. Keep the bow. The if you see every place, who is the goal? Krishna is the goal. Because he is the supreme personality of Godhead. But now in Mahaprabhu, Krishna becomes subject and Radhika become, become object. So who is the goal? Radhika is the uh, goal. This was real beauty of Krishna pastime in the Chaitanya. So we say Adharya Lila. He come only to give himself and to, to help us. That is the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appearance. But I understand little I share with you. But this is all mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our Acharya Rupa Goswami to be in Bhavulasa. Tat Admika Bhakti, Tat Bhav Admika, Tat Bhav Sambhoga Admika. But the Dasi of Radhika, they are living in the Bhav Ullasrit. They are happy when my boss is happy. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Jai. Yeah. There, there is big enthusiasm for your sharing, Gurudev, here in Matan. Um, I don't know anything. I'm <laughs> only learning from all of you. I'm just a small baby. I... I want to learn and to live in your fencing of Vaishnava that life becomes successful. Radhe. Jai Radhe. Radhe. Um, can I take a group for this more? Yeah. It's um, <laughs> saying that Radharani gives herself totally away to Shyam Sundar, totally selfless, but she also gives herself totally away to her maidservants. Actually, one is the lover and one is the baby. No. He has to care at the same time two things. She give everything for his lover. And child foolish babies who always with the <coughs> garbage and not clean. Never try to develop anything. <laughs> they don't know how to do it. They run to Mama and say, Mama, I become very dirty. I fall. She says, Don't problem. Don't say to others, <laughs> I will clean you. And again, she does clean, put powder and dress, and I guess go and play. Go, 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 be happy. How careful. But Rasa is there at the same time. So intense, Madhuri Rasa is there. 
how we can see without our love for Adam. Mm -hmm. So then, Guru, then, when this uh, intensity spills over, this abundance spills over and becomes Chaitanya Gaur Lila. No Krishna Chandra. Right. <laughs> and we sing we sing in the Arti, Jayorade, Jayorade, and then Nitagora Hari Bol Hari. In that moment, it spills over. Then is next. <laughs> <laughs> Ja, ta, ja, ta, gore, padara, vende, vende, te bak, stem, krata, punja, rasi. Narutam das Thakur is praying. Please, I beg you, go down and down in gore lila. Absorb yourself. And then you will be drowned completely. But then suddenly you come up again at one point. Go Sarnave Setaranga Chavidule Seradhan Madhava Antaranga. Very close to Radha Madhava, I come up. And actually now our Gopina said it's the other way, also other way around also. You'll be so much absorbed. In Raj Lila, hey, Rad, hey, and then suddenly the innermost heart of Srimadhi Radhika comes out because Krishna acts. He says in Gita, Yeyatamam How you approach me, I will respond to you. This is how Krishna is doing. But Radhika has a completely different attitude. Says, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. I have just one desire. This very jiva should right now come. So that's why when Mahaprabhu accepts that mood, very, very natural, suddenly, yeah, in Ujvalani Laman, it's called Yavad Ashraya Vriti. This is when Shimati Radhika is personally present. Suddenly, her heart spreads out and influences millions and millions of gopis. That's why when Radhika leaves Haslila, Krishna is not interested in millions and millions of gopis. But when Radhika is there, her heart shares and spreads around. And that's why when our Goranga goes through South India, there were some washermen at one river, just washing cloths. And Mahaprabhu, just a half a mile away, walks through. But in Kirtan, it's the Kirtan of Radhika. And the Yavad Ashraya Vritti, the intense mood of Radhika's heart spreads. And suddenly they throw away all the pots. They cannot wash anymore. They just run and become eternal associates of our Goranga. Yeah. This is Yavad Ashraya Vritti of, Go of Goranga. Just suddenly it happens. Goranga. Maharaj, Maharaj. Here, Maharaj. No, 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 I want to listen. No, no, I want to listen. I came so far. I came so millions of lifetimes. <laughs> Antaranga. Antaranga become Bairanga. <laughs> what is Antaranga? Can you say something, Antaranga? <laughs> What is Antaranya? Hmm. 
You know my problem. When I receive masses, I can say sometimes switch off that I cannot do anything. <laughs> so you have to little say my switch will on. And Taranga become Bhairanga. Our Siddha Deha is Antaranga Sakti of Swami Marsi and Sadak Deha is outer Sakti of my Sadak Deha. Sevas Naran Maharas. Seva sadhak rupi. When you will do the seva from sadhak rupi, then siddha rupi in chhatrahi, you will get the one umbrella that, that you can use it to protect yourself, that is the umbrella given by Antaranga Sakti. Siddha Seva Sadhak Rupin. When I will do in the same mood, Sadhak Rup, Seva, and always do, fix the goal for her, Samni, then Siddha Rupin, in a Siddha Sarup, you know, Pinkiri Bhav, Manjari Bhav, you will always protect it if you are in Sadhak Deha or Siddha Deha. Every time, Samri is carrying you. So, Antaranga Sakti protect Bahirangas energy, material energy also when we surrender by the grace of my Istadev. If without Istadev, my Saru cannot develop by the grace of Istadev. We need to relate and to Rag and Anurag. When we need that Rag and Anurag, then my sarup is required to do it. And that sarup is moving to serve Antaranga Sakti of That is a Ladani Shakti. Madanakya Mahabhav. Some precise listen that the gopis and sakis are also relishing Mahabhav. So Mahabhav by the association of Radhika Antaranga Sakti of Krishna. Uh -huh. You can you can realize it and really this is the beauty even, even the krishna say in bhagavad gita 10:15 i cannot understand myself without my antarangas i cannot understand Myself, if she not open, she, she show me who I am. I understand through her. Right. 
that very deep everything is full of us full of us i know no bhagavad gita is so sweet when i listen read the bilapur samandali and i realize it then i start understanding bhagavad gita prabhu then i say udha please you take bhagavad gita and share it when i read the bilap kusum anjali my bhav become a sai then my desire come only to listen to chetan chetan is surprise i don't know what happened then i say please read chetan chetan is very important to understand now so without bhav asthai our last book of highest book of of rupa goswami and last book kali kavala uh, you read that is still sanchari so rupa goswami was in sanchari bhav or what no but he is teaching this book because it's not easy to be in a sai bhav it's not easy not this is 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 but ragnardas is was very close as shade of mahapna rupa goswami he knows what my guru they wish to me and he opened the fact what he teach learn from his guru that is a very deep i cannot say you i cannot say you and i Radha Rasudhani ji is also very important because Krishna, by mistake, if you become close up to Krishna, he is very naughty and very stealing. <laughs> he always catch our mind. He is chitta chor. He is makan chor. His nature is this to steal. always for himself he like to do that so by the mercy of radha rasudhani ji bhav will become a sai radha krishna then a more the tradition and will come radhe radhe thank you my dear radhe guru rani dhanyawad sir guru dev thank you i'm not satisfied with <laughs> I wanted to know about um, Sai Baba. So when I'm walking with my children in the shopping mall, they're running here and there. I have to like always watch them. They are Sai. They're not in their Sai. But when I take them by the hand, then they walk along with me in the same pace. So when we grab Guru Manjri's hand, then we will get the Sai Guru there. She will walk with us. she will pull us we don't have to actually lose our we can lose our independence in this moment as i is only by my seekers without press my mind not to stay one place or the feeling can stay one place mind is here there that and to bow where the mind goes on my feeling one day i am listening some mental religion 
One day I realized it. Why mental religion? How to balance the right first manas? And he said, mental religion means mind is my jumping. And mentally, if I can see my mind now is moving. What I do, I dream it, right? Um, you cannot change that. If you do, you have to dream it. So, Asmara, means what is my mind? See, my mind is so so as much what I do, it happens to me. So mind is, it has to be down in meditation, in the Harana, in Dhruva Smurti. After Dhruva Smurti, we have. Dhruva star is the biggest fix like that. Dhruva is <laughs> then Samadhi can. And Manjari power is the stage of Samadhi. Always you have to stay. So it's a mental release. <laughs> it's, it's without that. My jumping mind cannot do that. So it has to be Smaran, Dhan, Dharan, Dhruva, Smriti, Samadhi. I don't know the words, I forget my mind, not keep. And so, so I feel like this is a mental reality. It works through the mind. So you have to empty your mind from what we do. Takes time. So Prabhupada said, in ten ten, when you assign Krishna, means you're done with Krishna. Assignments, you contract them, okay, and there is no doubt in you. Then, slowly, slowly, <laughs> and steady, <laughs> slow and steady, you realize. And that realization will give you. Ultimate. I don't remember that I said something else. Ultimate. Go. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. What is this ultimate goal? Krishna is not. Why he two times? He said, goal is Krishna. Uh, he has say ultimate goal is Krishna. But so what is bigger? Goal or ultimate goal? <laughs> huh? <Krishna. laughs> ultimate goal is bigger. And that to search. Yeah. What is this? Prabhupada he didn't rewrite it here. Yeah. Honestly, this all clear happened when I read this will happen so much. Word by word, no one time, maybe <laughs> then I understand. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> they say that to be in a cyber to one pointedness for one group. And this is the mercy. But, and without mercy of Chaitanya, it's not very yet to me. I know things that before I am God Radha Krishna, and I don't need Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Really, I say you, I have no relation with him, Nitai Gauras. Because then Vrindavan, Gauriya Vaishnava temple, not keep this. <coughs> and it was supervised by you know, Radha Raman Goswamis. They now recommend me. Because Brajavasi Puyari don't like to do this service. But now, by the grace, I see from Radha Mohan Nitai Gorkam. In Arti one time. One time. And then my thoughts are clean. I know. I think first Nitai Guru. First Nitai. I think what? <laughs> Nitai Guru is Gopar. Then I see God is also. Nitai first. Then God. <laughs> so all is a grace. And my Nitai is sitting here. My Christian, my elder brother. His mercy. Over times, I meet one astrologer. Honestly, I see him in one place in Mugir. So, when one is in very much traveling, <laughs> Where I was sitting, he's traveling whole world. This, then he closed his eyes. He said, "Your Siddhi will come in Switzerland." I said, "What you say? <laughs> I will, I will got the perfection realization in Switzerland." <laughs> Not in so now I feel why he say that you will get perfection in season. What perfection? To know myself and which path we have to move. I I am very, very, very thankful to my elder brother, Krish Chandra. He showed me the way that Adi Lila poor country. <laughs> if you not understand that thing, you will understand. Yeah. He made you mad. He Pagal is not associated with him. <laughs> He's a very dangerous person. I will go next time. 800 people is coming. I will go in public and I will catch in my and say, don't associate with him. I am honest at talking with you. Sure, I will go. <laughs> and I will say this boldly, keep distance from him, he will make you mad. Not <laughs> you, invite. <laughs> you invite or not invite? <laughs> I don't need your invitation. <laughs> I don't want to say, you know, they scratch. They, I don't know any, honestly, I forget everything. Believe me. Radhe, 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 Radhe,